Hey everybody, Passants here. If you're anything like me, you've probably looked at the in-game store and noticed that gold has a wildly inconsistent value depending on what you're buying, and then wondered what the best and worst gold value is for all the purchases in the game. Now as far as I know, the last time somebody did this calculation was four years ago, and they didn't cover everything. So I figure it's high time this was revisited. So I'm here, hitting you with the absolute best and worst ways to spend your gold in Heroes and Generals, by comparing their prices in gold versus credits, and finding what gets you the best value for your gold, ranked by credit to gold ratio. This list should be exhaustive, but I'm just one guy, so if I missed anything, or you spot a mistake in the maths, let me know down in the comments. At any rate, let's get started with one of the most common purchases. Weapons. Out of the primary weapons available to soldiers of their own faction, almost all of them gravitate to costing about 83 to 84 times as many credits as they do gold, with the best value gold purchase being the PTRS, which costs 94 credits per gold, though the 7000 gold can uh, put that purchase a bit out of reach. Most other weapons, including explosives and rocket launchers, also have a credit to price ratio of around 84, but captured weapons are far cheaper to buy using gold than credits. Explosives, rifles, tier 3 LMGs, tier 1 SMGs hover around the 200 to 210 credits per gold margin, but higher level SMGs and assault rifles, and lower tier LMGs for some reason, they get as high as about 230 to 250. Anti-tank rifles go above 250 credits per gold, and the best value is a captured PTRS with a gold to credit ratio of 320. If you can amass that much gold, a captured PTRS is a very cost-effective purchase, at least compared to other weapons. But what about vehicles, weapon mods, camouflage, veteran membership? Let's dig into the other ways you can blow all your hard-earned cash. Renaming your soldiers gets you a fairly decent deal, with a CPG of 166, if you're into that sort of thing, and renaming weapons gives you a CPG of 169. But you can name soldiers for free when you buy them. Speaking of which, soldiers generally cost around 100 CPG, with rank 0 infantry costing slightly less and high ranking specialist classes costing slightly more. If you are going to buy a rank 15 recon, it might not be a bad idea to buy it with gold, but it also might not be a bad idea to reconsider buying a rank 15 recon because it might be a bad idea to buy a rank 15 recon. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> play the objective. <coughs> Veteran membership has a CPG of 167 to 359, depending on what duration you buy, but a low 90 day vet has the highest CPG of them all. 180 day vet still gets you more veteran membership for less gold compared to buying two 90 day veterans, and it remains the better deal overall. This kind of highlights a really important point that just because you're getting good value for your gold compared to what you would with credits, it doesn't mean that thing is worth buying to begin with. Anyway, ribbon boosters are commonly used by smart players to greatly accelerate the grind for specific items, and they have a CPG value of around 146 to 168, with a few ribbon boosters, such as Chauffeur, offering a CPG as high as 260 which, combined with their low price, makes them very compelling indeed. Vehicles have a similar CPG to weapons, with aircraft, tanks, and most infantry or recon vehicles ranging from about 83 to 86, with the only standout value purchase being amphibious cars. These vehicles have double the CPG value of 168 credits per gold, so if you are looking to buy vehicles with gold, these are the only ones that are a particularly good deal. Moving on to weapon and vehicle mods, we see that almost all weapon mods, from triggers to internals to barrels to sights to bullets on pistols, LMGs, rifles, and AT rifles, et al., they all cost around 83 to 84 CPG, both to buy and repair, putting them on a level with buying most weapons and vehicles. Vehicle attachments and ammo cost around 84 CPG, with a heavy tank HE getting no higher than 87. Besides the weapon mods being fairly poor value to buy with gold, you should never use gold to auto-repair your weapons. 
since gold prices are rounded up for very small costs, and you may get a CPG of 10 or less when doing this. This is probably the worst gold value you can get in game. Do not auto repair with gold. Now, on a completely different note, we come to the last main thing you can buy with credits. Camouflage. Vehicle camo costs around 250 CPG, with a few seasonal skins going up to 270, while infantry camo ranges from 167 to 192. Oh, and I guess I should mention in-game bundles. While they do have a high credit to gold ratio, sometimes over 200 CPG, they're actually really bad value in most ways. For example, the Infantry Assault Bundle costs over 3,000 gold more than buying each of its components individually. Presumably that extra cost is to cover the time it would normally take to grind and unlock those items normally before buying them, but frankly you're much better off popping a ribbon booster or two, playing a few games with starting gear, and saving thousands of gold or even millions of credits. Furthermore, the rigid loadouts you get from bundles aren't necessarily what you want to use. You often get multiple items that have overlapping combat roles, such as an SMG and a pistol, or a pistol and a knife, when really you need one close range backup weapon at most, when having two is kind of just worse than carrying more medicine, explosives, or a wrench. Basically, you should only consider bundles if you're sure you want everything in them, and you're too impatient to grind out the unlocks for a better deal overall. So, from all that, we conclude that the best times to spend gold over credits are when buying captured weapons, veteran membership, camouflage, especially vehicle camouflage, and the best of all, ribbon boosters, which not only have a high CPG, but are very useful and very cheap, meaning that you don't need to save up a huge amount of gold in order to buy them the way that you would with a captured weapon. It's also important to bear in mind that occasionally, various in-game items will come on special, usually with only the gold cost being discounted. So if you really want to pinch some pennies, wait until a sale before you pull the trigger on those carefully calculated purchases. Maximum stocks await. But hold it right there, Mr. Wall Street. What we've discovered so far is only the best way to spend your gold if you're focused on the FPS side of Heroes and Generals. There's an RTS as well. And one RTS only purchase is the rank 18 general, which come in at a good CPG ratio of 199, but most high level RTS players don't like buying generals and prefer to buy rank 12 officers and gradually level them up to general. Since besides being cheaper, it also gives you the opportunity to earn some combat badges for them to improve their leadership ability. Hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of poetic how generals who've never seen combat actually make worse leaders. I, I wonder if the game is trying to send a message with that. Anyway. We haven't talked about the most bizarre price discrepancy of all. The one that absolutely boggles the mind. The difference between buying and upgrading assault teams with gold. Consider this. Buying a guard assault team costs 28,500 war funds, or 992 gold, but upgrading an infantry assault team to motorized infantry costs 30,000 war funds, but only 96 gold. That's more than an order of magnitude difference in gold to war funds value, from 29 to 312 war funds per gold. Deploying your ATs with gold can also be a great way to save war funds, from 180 to 294 war funds per gold. Since war funds are generally considered more valuable and harder to earn than credits are, it all makes upgrading and deploying assault teams arguably the best use of your gold in Heroes and Generals, with the significant caveat that for war funds to mean anything to you, you have to be quite deeply invested in the RTS side of Heroes and Generals. As a primarily FPS player myself, I'll probably be using my ill-gotten gains to finance some new, fancy new paint jobs for my favourite tanks, or for buying ribbon boosters. Now, technically the war funds to gold ratio is even higher for renaming your assault teams at a staggering 396 war funds per gold. So if you are renaming ATs, I implore you to do it with gold. But obviously, renaming assault teams kind of has zero effect on gameplay, so it's 
probably not worth spending money on, especially since you can name them for free when you buy them. So, with all that said, those are the best ways to spend your gold in Heroes and Generals. And let me know down in the comments what you guys' thrifty tips and tricks are, and what videos you'd like to see in the future. Leave a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of it in the future. And most importantly, thank you all for watching. Thank you.